Hi everyone and welcome to the July update for Nintex Forms for Office 365. So the main portion of the update this month is the save and continue feature for new responsive forms. So if you open up the new responsive forms designer, the first thing you'll notice is we now have a cancel button in the action panel and that means that you now have the update for save and continue. You don't require updating the app at all, it's just opening up the designer and you'll see this new button. So clicking on the action panel, you'll notice there's a few different options in the config panel. So connected to, which we'll talk about in a moment, the submit button options, cancel button options, and save and continue toggle. So I can turn that toggle on and it turns on the button, turning it off is going to turn it off. So that will only light up um, if you turn it on. So any existing forms won't have that by default. You just have to turn it on. So We'll turn that on and there's just one thing that needs to be explained around uh, validation on save and continue. So as with all SharePoint lists, the title column is required by SharePoint and if we drag on another text short, now this can also be made required but not connected to SharePoint. So that's important because if we're doing save and continue, um, we will actually write any data that you have back to the list. Um, but if it's a field like this, which is not required by SharePoint, but required by Nintex, we will bypass that. However, if it is required by SharePoint, we will ask you to fill that field out. So let's go ahead and publish this form and go and have a look and explain that a bit further. Okay, so forms published. We're just gonna refresh here and we'll click on new item. So. As I said, so the title column is always required. Now you can turn that off and just have the required behavior in Nintex, or you know, if you choose to have it validated in SharePoint as well, then we will also respect that. So, because if you come to this control, you'll see that required is inherited from SharePoint. So if I was to click save and continue, only this one is going to stop you and make sure that you put data in, not the Nintex required one. So save and continue will bypass that validation. So I can put in, Hello world, and now pressing save and continue, it will actually write, uh, where's my, let's go to here, and hello world's come through. So then if I was to come back to here, and then so hello Ewan, press save and continue, and now it says hello Ewan. So if we don't fill out the field, for SharePoint, it's going to ask you to fill it out. Now, if I put uh, hello you in again, and then I press submit. Now this is when the Nintex validation, the unbound controls is actually gonna say, you need to put some data in here. So uh, hello again. And once you press submit, that's when all of the validation kicks off, regardless if it's connected to SharePoint or not. So just something to keep in mind. So if you uh, want to use save and continue, um, and you put validation on SharePoint, it's gonna block you and sort of make people fill out those fields. Now, if you don't want it to happen, uh, turn off required in SharePoint and you should be good to go. So now the next question people often ask me is, how do I stop my workflow from starting when someone clicks the save and continue button? So that's why we have the connected to property here. So Connected to is really just saying send a value back to a column that you choose. So I've made a custom column, just a single line of text. Uh, where is it? So I've got a single line of text column called form status. You can name any column you want with whatever you want. I've just made mine form status. And so I'm connecting my action panel to form status. Now, when I click submit, I'm gonna call this final or just send the value of final back to my form status column. Now, if I click on save and continue, I'm gonna say draft. So publishing that and coming back to my form, press F5, I think that should be published, there we go. So now let's open up my existing one we did before. And let's go and edit this one and hello world. And if I press save and continue, now I can go and open it somewhere else. Let's close that. Okay, so now it says draft. So coming back to here. Um, hello everyone, so hello world, press save and continue. Pressing refresh, 
hello everyone, it's still draft. Once I press submit, obviously validation is going to ask me to fill that out. Fill this in, press submit, coming back here, hello everyone, draft, press refresh. Oh, you could just see it just refresh, so it says final. Now that's good for someone that might be someone out in the field. Um, filling out forms, submitting them through, still working on them. Someone in the office can just see which ones are final, which ones are draft. But it's also really helpful for your workflow as well because you don't want the workflow kicking off when you haven't finished your form. You're still pressing save and continue and putting data into the list. So that's when we have, I've just built a simple uh, workflow with just an action set in it. But what you can do is come to the settings and you can put uh, what we call um, Conditional conditional start, I think it's called. Um, so these are conditions based on when the workflow starts. So you can say, you can turn these off and on. You can say, well, I'm going to enable uh, the workflow for when items are created, but then also uh, is when the form status is equal to final. So that's the column we created before uh, where I store that the button is connected to. So if we come back to here, so form status is going to put final in there. And then so the workflow is checking to say, if it's set as final, it's going to start the workflow. Now again, I can also do that on item modified as well. So if someone's filling out a form and they're still using save and continue, the workflow won't start until they press the submit button, not when they've pressed the save and continue button. So uh, press save and we'll publish this. Now obviously you wouldn't have a workflow with just an action set in it, it's not really useful, but it's just showing the point of the conditional, um, conditional start on the workflow and how that would work. So, uh, where are we? So this one, if this conditional workflow was active, then the workflow would have started. So once this is published, okay, then I can go and create a new item. And we'll say, hello, Alexis, and uh, hello, Fab. And we'll press save and continue. Now we'll come back to our list. Press refresh and we see hello Alexis and hello Fab is in an unbound control. So it's got draft and the workflow hasn't started. So if we come to more, go to workflow and no workflows are running. So then if I was to come back and open this one up again, then press submit which is going to set the item to final. Now coming through here and we go to workflow. And hopefully we should see a workflow start. There we go. So we can see the workflow has started. So the workflow has started only because of that condition. So that's how you can make sure that um, don't start your workflows when someone's still trying to collect the data, only once it's been a final submission, which we saw back in yeah. So that's how you can use save and continue. Um, it's pretty much should be ready for everyone to use now. So um, let me know what you think in the comments. Cheers.